everyone. It's exciting. I have an exciting day today for me. I don't know if it's for you guys. If you're watching this video, you must be excited about it though. I'm gonna take you with me to go get a treatment done for my melasma and hyperpigmentation. I'm gonna get something called microneedling. And then on top of that, I'm gonna get a Cosmolon peel. So I'm really going like heavy duty with this treatment. I'm nervous about it. I feel like I'm at a place where I really need to it's, it's time, I need to get this done. So I wanted to talk to you guys about this first because I'm in really pretty lighting right now. There's like this outside light coming in from the window and everything and I have sunscreen on, it has a little bit of a tint to it. So my skin actually looks really pretty and glowy right now, but you know, if you guys have been following me, you know that I've been dealing with this melasma for a few years, especially because of my pregnancies and stuff and it's hard to deal with. And so I have made sure to just really go at it with my skincare routine and use ingredients that are just amazing for, you know, lightening that discoloration. So I've been using alpha arbutin, I've been using vitamin C, I've been using azelaic acid, I've been using nice cinnamide. I've been using tranexamic acid. You know, I've got Suspera now in my skincare routine in the morning. I even went and bought Faded by Topicals so that it has this mix of all these kinds of ingredients and I've added that in and I use my retinoids at night. So I've done pretty much everything that I could to really get my melasma to, you know, a good place. And I'm telling you guys right now, like if you're just watching this, you're probably like, no, she still has a lot of melasma, but I'm telling you right now, it could be so much worse. My melasma could be completely out of control. Melasma can take over your skin where it turns into this like mask. They call it the mask of pregnancy because it can get really bad. I think I've done a good job of keeping it where I could get it basically. And now, you know, it's time to step it up a little bit if I'm serious about getting, you know, like that even skin tone and texture. It's time that I go get this treatment. So I'm gonna go see a woman named Melissa Halusim. She has a med spa here in Los Angeles called Skin Thesis. We've actually gone to her spa a couple of times for the SAS, the show that my friend Sharzad and I used to do on mixed makeup. This is gonna be a little bit different because I don't have anybody to help me. No one's allowed to go in with me right now. That's just kind of protocol. So I'm doing this all vlog style with my iPhone. Okay, so I'm in my car. I am heading over. Whew, I have to tell you guys I'm a little bit nervous. It's probably not gonna put me out of commission for very long, but I always feel like chemical peels. They're just so brutal to me. I don't know why, I, I just hate going through the process of it. Maybe I'm a little bit impatient too. I hate that uncomfortable feeling. Just of any treatment, like laser treatments, chemical peels, all of it. It really is annoying to me, but I know it's worth it. And I know I trust Melissa, so here we go. What are we doing today? So we are doing microneedling with Cosmolan. And I started doing this treatment years ago. And the reason is a lot of people know what Cosmolan is and they'll use Cosmolan 1 just to put on their face and stay on it for about 12 hours. But what I found was the same ingredients in the Cosmolan 2, not as powerful as 1, can be included with microneedling. So microneedling alone causes collagen induction, makes little holes all over the face. And right afterwards, those holes are open, so we lay the Cosmolan 2 over it to seep in. And then I have the patient leave on the Cosmolan 2 for four hours for penetration. And you're gonna get a much better result with pigmentation, because, especially that stubborn melasma. The Cosmolan 1 is kind of like the OG. The one that like everyone used to do back in the day. And right, then... and they send you home with the Cosmolan 2 to continue. And Cosmolan 2 is a great product to use at home. We get the medical grade one, so it has the hydroquinone in it as well, in the one and in the two. The one would be a little bit too powerful after microneedling, and you have a higher risk of that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So that's why we use the two as well. Microneedling alone is great to kind of break up pigmentation, but it isn't going to, you know, drastically improve the pigmentation like some other treatments, a peel or certain lasers. So that's why we combine it with the Cosmolan. Anything I should know about the aftercare? Or like, is it gonna hurt, anything like that? So it's your regular microneedling, and right afterwards, you do feel hot, kind of like sunburnish, but we keep the Cosmolan 2 in the refrigerator, so we put it on to cool the skin. It can be a little stingy afterwards, but your skin will calm down. Normally with microneedling, you get blotchy red for about three days, 
you might be a little bit more red because we're using the Cosmolan. So you're still gonna get that redness reduction through the days, but it's gonna be more bright red than the regular microneedling. With microneedling, whether it's with Cosmolan or not, three days later, your skin does get dry and flaky, so we wanna make sure you're keeping hydrated. Am I gonna wear the Cosmolan out of here? Yes, you are. So kind of looks like a peanut butter layer on your skin. Okay, and I would wear it for how long? Four hours. Four hours afterwards. And you're gonna wash it off when you get home. Okay, sounds good. All right, I'm ready for this. So I get to sit with the numbing cream on for about 25 minutes. I can already feel my face getting pretty numb and it stinks a little bit. Like you can see like I'm turning a little bit red, but you know, that's part of it. You just gotta deal. I'd rather be <laughs> numb than feel the microneedling anyway. Press the motor so you can hear it. Okay. And we're gonna start on the forehead, this area, because if you feel any kind of more discomfort, it's gonna be here because it's right on the bone. It's more of a vibration mm -hmm. of it. And this is where you're most numb. So I'm gonna put some serum. And the serum I'm using is something to help with pigmentation as well. There we go. The good thing too about microneedling is it helps with superficial collagen induction, so you know, and it works on the fine lines, the pores, the texture, and overall skin tone. Who do you think benefits most from microneedling? So I have a couple different types of clients that benefit from it. Some who are really struggling with texture issues, who've had acne scarring, or just really enlarged pores. And then the others are what we're trying to deal with pigmentation. But microneedling alone isn't going to solve your pigmentation problem. You need some sort of topical post to help it. And a lot of people talk about PRP. Mm -hmm. PRP is not going to help with the pigmentation. PRP is more going to help with healing and regenerating that collagen. does look like peanut butter. I had almond butter today for lunch. Could look like that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's in it? Well, the Cosmolan has a lot of different ingredients to kind of attack the overactive melanocytes to suppress it. We're using the medical grade formulation. So we had it compounded and it does have hydroquinone in it as well. That's Kojic as well, vitamin E. so hot. I'm ready to yeah. go shopping, go take on the world. Maybe I'll schedule a video shoot for tonight. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna wear this for four hours. It's definitely stingy. I have to keep this on. It'll be interesting to see how my kids react to this. The fact that I have to drive home like this, it's a little bit funny, but here we go. It's a 15 minute drive, so this, it's not too bad. People might look over at me and be like, what the heck is going on? Getting rid of my melasma, that's what's going on, guys. That's what's going on. I'm still really numb. Okay, it has been four hours. My alarm just went off on my phone, and Melissa was like, you have to wash this off at four hours just because she doesn't want me to get like, you know, actual hyperpigmentation. There's like this fine line that you walk where these kinds of treatments could actually, you know, it's trying to get rid of hyperpigmentation, but then you could overdo it. Just like we talk about with skincare, right? You could overdo things. You could be too rough. You could go too strong. And then suddenly you've got the opposite happening. You're creating hyperpigmentation. So she wanted me to take it off, but I wanted to show you guys really quick. You can touch it, like it dries. It dried down actually pretty quickly. Like while I was in the car, it started to dry down a decent amount. But see, look, mm. 
My eyes are starting to kind of like burn a little bit too and my lips start tasting kind of gross like chemical gross you know that like chemical taste that you get from stuff like I don't know from something like this so it was only just like in the last hour that I started getting this like burn in my eyes and on and that like weird taste on my mouth and my lips and stuff so I'm excited to get this off the things that Melissa gave me are some gauze popsicle stick and she gave me Tylenol I don't usually take Tylenol I'm like an Advil girl besides when I'm pregnant she was like Tylenol might be the painkiller to, to use if you feel like you really have a lot of pain. She said I was gonna have like a lot of heat on my face tonight, that feeling even tomorrow. So she said to wash it off. I've also got like a microfiber, really soft wash towel. And then I'll show you guys what I use right afterwards. So I'm gonna rinse it off now. Just so you know, I, I understand now why she gave me um, gauze to wipe this off because my washcloth is probably gonna be stained after this. Looks like I've got some poopies happening. That's how we talk to the kids. Poopy time. Just gently wiping this off with a clean, warm washcloth. And you can see there's redness under there. Oof. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, are you guys ready for this? It's pretty terrifying. This is what my face looks like right now. It seems like I didn't wash all of it off, right? That's what it looks like. Remember, I got microneedling done before the actual peel. So what we're seeing is, you know, like the scabbing and stuff from the microneedling and then the Cosmolon peel also. So, whew, there's a lot going on. Look at that little guy. The pimple, I'm sure, is really happy that he came to join us today. All right, let's put some skincare on because I need it. Whew. And it's, you know, there's no brown, it's clean. That is what my face looks like right now. Mm. Okay, so anytime I get a procedure done, I have like a go-to system. I don't really use much. I don't even use the stuff that is usually given to me unless it's, you know, they like specifically say that you have to use that. So I'm gonna go in with my brand Natarium. It's our squalane oil. It's just pure squalane oil, which is what I want. I don't want anything else really. Just some drops. I'll probably use more than I normally would in this case. I want it to help heal my skin. I'm just gonna pat this on. My skin is not as tender as it looks, to be honest. And by the way, my skin is also very damp still. Still keeping it damp, because you want that hydration. You still want to lock it all in. Okay, so I've got my squalane oil on. This is when I slug. So slugging is the next step. This is key. Okay, I can hear my child crying and screaming because she wants to know where mommy is, because this is not my typical filming hour. This is the time when the kids Kids want me, so aqua four. We're just gonna take a little bit. It's time for some slugging. This is truly, this is when you need to slug your face. Protection, healing. This is what this is going to do. It's going to heal and protect and lock in what I just put on with the squalane. I'll probably put more on before I go to bed tonight too, depending on if I feel like I need it or not. But that is my post-procedure skincare routine for probably the next few days, like two or three days, depending on how my skin's doing. Definitely for the next two days. Okay, <laughs> I'm real pretty right now. Mm -hmm. This looks good. I'm sure I am encouraging all of you to go get this done. I'm sure you wanna look like this on a, I guess this would technically be day two because it is Saturday morning. For reference, I got this done on Thursday in the afternoon. I removed the Cosmolan around like 6.30 p.m. By the way, I don't know if it's Cosmolan or Cosmolan. I've heard it different ways. You guys saw obviously what it looked like when I took it off immediately, like immediately after I took it off. Yesterday, I looked pretty much the same way. I got a couple of shots of it and stuff of my face so you guys can see, but Nothing was really happening. I was just using my usual concoction of using my squalane oil and then also, you know, topping it with this. I woke up pretty much feeling the same yesterday and wasn't, it actually wasn't as like stingy and burny as I thought it was going to be. So it looks worse than it actually feels. So anyway, but today is Saturday, it's Saturday morning. And I can tell you that I woke up this morning feeling super dry, even though I was using, you know, my usuals. And these are, you guys know, like <laughs> this is the ultimate in like, you know, going hydrating and moisturizing and locking it all in and stuff. So this morning, like I, I got up out of bed at like 6.30 a.m. because I could feel my face just feeling so tight and dry. I went in and I put my same thing, some squalane oil, some aquaphor, and I've just kind of been letting it sit for a little bit. And you can see now, as I get closer, I am starting to peel already, which is kind of wild to like see that peeling process. So it's starting on this area first. See, like you can see there's some like flakiness. I'm pretty bloodshot. Whenever I do any kind of like a peel or something, for some reason my eyes start to get a little bit irritated. I think because it starts with like 
all of the stuff starts to kind of like sting my eyes. You know, even the process of putting the, the peel on, you know, before she did the treatment, you know, like she used alcohol to clean my face, which is not something that you guys should be doing on a regular basis. This is truly just to prep your skin for a procedure like that, for a treatment. So anyway, I think like the combination of like the fumes of it and all that kind of stuff just like kickstarts that irritation to my eyes. My eyes are really sensitive. So this is where I'm at right now. I can feel it, it feels gritty because you know, like you can see as I'm like touching it, it's starting to get so dry that it's starting to peel. So I have a feeling by like tonight or tomorrow, I'm gonna be really peely. So you can see there's like some marks. I'm hoping this is like my hyperpigmentation starting to kind of rise up a little bit. I don't know, I'm guessing. This is me guessing. So let's see where this goes goes today. I mean, just in general, I'm going to be really careful with my skin. I'm going to stay inside today, which is something I don't do on the weekends because of my kids. They're just going to have to deal with mommy being like, I'm staying inside. But we still have lots of windows all over the house. Like, it's one of my favorite things about our home is that it's just really well lit. There's a lot of natural light that comes in, but that also means that I need to protect my face. So I am going in with this by LTMD. It is my UV Restore SPF 40. This is all mineral, which just is helpful to not, um, you know, just to not irritate my skin, like further irritate it, but you could use whatever it is. Just protect your skin, stay inside. If you do have to go outside, not only use your sunscreen, but use everything you can to protect your, your face. Like wear a visor, wear a hat, whatever it is. So I'm gonna put this on. This is obviously tinted. It's interesting to see. Oh yeah, look at that. You guys can see how the flakiness is. Ooh, this irritates a little bit. It has nothing to do with LTMD's formulation because I use it all the time. My skin's obviously very irritated. I was gonna say it's a little bit irritated. Mm, that would be an understatement. I'm gonna put it on my neck and I'm gonna go on with my day. Side note, see this amazing sweatshirt I'm wearing? This is a sweatshirt. This is merch from Jocelyn Davis. My friend Jocelyn Davis sent this to me because she is selling merch now and I love her. She sent this to me for Valentine's Day to say she loves me. So if you guys wanna check out her merch, and if you love Jocelyn as much as I do, go check out her merch. I'll put a link in the description box. Okay, this is Sunday morning. I woke up this morning, I was like, oh my gosh, my face is so dry and so tight that I just, it was like the first thing I did this morning was just put it all over my face because I couldn't handle it. I somehow misplaced my UV Restore sunscreen. It was like kind of carrying it around with me yesterday in the house. So it's kind of strange that I lost it, but I somehow have lost it. I'm sure it's like gonna end up like being on my counter or something like that, but I, I can't find it. It's not in my bathroom. Anyway, so I'm gonna go in with this one. This does have a hybrid of the physical and the chemical filters, but I think I'm at a place now where I'm okay to put this on my skin without it burning. Yeah, feels fine. So last night when I was washing my face, I kind of wish I was recording that because my skin really started to peel while I was just washing my face just very gently. Like I can still feel that I've got like, you know, little flaky parts here, but last night my skin truly like, as I was just, just like this, just like barely doing this with water on it and some really gentle cleanser. I could feel just like little pieces of my skin coming off. My skin is still really red, so I, I think that was just like phase one. I don't think this is gonna be like a chemical peel type of peeling situation where I look like a snake shedding. I think it's just gonna continue doing what it did last night where, you know, when I wash my face tonight, it's just gonna feel like, like I've got little pieces of skin like that right there. Anyway, but I anticipate a couple more days of looking like an irritated mess. I'm gonna probably add a couple things to my skincare routine tonight. Not anything intense, just like some skin barrier stuff. So, you know, picking it up a little bit with my routine, but for the first few days I stick with it. Just being really simple with my squalane and my aquaphor. I'm gonna put some on my neck and I'm ready to go. I actually have to go out into the world today. I have to go outside a little bit. My husband was holding down the fort yesterday with the kids, but you know, I cannot go an entire weekend just by nature of being a mom. You cannot go the entire weekend without going outside at least once with your kids. So I have to go outside. So I have this visor, UV visor that my friend Danica sent me. It's been amazing to just have in general because I don't like to expose my face to the sun anyway. I have this cool visor that you can like adjust how far it's covering your face and stuff. So I'll probably wear that on top of, you know, wearing my sunscreen and stuff. You know, I get a little intense, but I'm trying to get rid of all the dark marks. So I have to be intense at least for a little bit. All right, gonna finish up my sunscreen because you see, I have a lot 
of exposure today. It's a nice day in Los Angeles. This is the reason why I live here. Okay, I just got out of the shower. Don't mind me. Just wanted to show you guys really quick what I'm gonna do. So, okay, it's Sunday night. Got the treatment done on Thursday afternoon. For context, this is how my skin looks. I just got out of the shower. My skin feels really tight right now. Like it feels like somebody went like this and like, like just pulled my skin back. But all of the flakiness is off. While I was in the shower, it just very gently rubbed off. If you start to actually peel after you've had, you know, any kind of like treatment done, you're not supposed to tug at it. But this is stuff that as I just really gently washed my face, it all came off. So this little guy just, he's not gonna give up. This is where it is right now. I feel like my skin can take a little bit more. I'm not gonna go intense with it. So I'm gonna add in this. So this is by Stradia, it's their liquid gold. I'm gonna put this on, it's a barrier repair cream. It just happens to have some of my favorite soothing ingredients like Camellia sinensis in it as well. There is niacinamide and I suspect my skin can handle this now and I'm right. I'm not feeling any sting or tingle from it. So that's good. After that, I'm still going in with Naturium Squalane Oil. You don't need a lot of this. I think it's amazing for barrier repair because it's truly just an oil that your skin recognizes. It moisturizes, it helps kickstart your healing properties because it's replacing lipids that your skin needs, especially after a treatment like this. There's also, you know, nothing else added to it. You know, the reason why I use it is you're not trying to guess, you know, if there's like an, an ingredient that might sting on your skin. That's why I go in, in the beginning, especially with just squalane oil and then the aquaphor or CeraVe or Vaseline, whatever it is. You're essentially just trying to keep it super simple, just the bare minimum. And while I let that absorb, I'm taking my retinol complex cream from Naturium. No, I'm not putting it on my face, but I am gonna put a pump onto my neck and chest area because this is what I would actually do. You guys are participating in my post shower uh, routine. I would actually go even lower. Boop. You guys know. Neck, chest, and then I think I'm ready for the last product. I am now going in with this from my brand Naturium as well. It is our plant ceramide rich moisture cream. This is amazing for dry skin and that's essentially like, you know, you essentially have to treat your skin after a treatment like that. You have to treat it like if it's you're repairing your skin barrier. So this is the type of product you want. Ceramides, just like there are ceramides in the Stradia Gold, you are trying to rebuild your barrier, your skin barrier. I don't know if rebuild is the word. It's what I chose. It is not scientific. It's just the word I chose because that's how I envisioned it in my mind. I'm gonna bring that down. And again, you guys know, I'm going all the way down. I have a towel on. Don't worry, I'm not Nikes completely. Okay, I'm going to let that kind of sit for a second and then I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna use more Aquaphor. I probably will because my skin feels so tight and so dry, it just feels like I'm going to need it. So I'm gonna do moisturizer on my body. I have been using this one a lot from Josie Moran. I'm not gonna show this process, but this is their Skin Dope CBD Body Butter. It has argan oil, which I'm very interested in. I like argan oil lately. And also this by Milk. This is the Melatonin Overnight Lip Mask. I've been loving this stuff. Look at that, it's like halfway gone. I've only had it for like two weeks, maybe three weeks, but I love this stuff. Ken from my, my private Facebook group. Also recommended this one. Yeah, so I'm gonna go do my body skincare routine and then I'll be back if I have to do uh, some aquaphor on top. Okay, I went and did my body routine and my skin feels really good. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit, but right before bed, I'll probably spritz a little bit of toner on my face. Like I'll use the Naturium Niacinamide Spray and then that's just to like, you know, get my skin a little bit hydrated and then I'll go in with some aquaphor just before bed because I have been waking up with my skin feeling so dry and so tight. Um, I did want to show you guys this since I was out in the sun today. This is a visor a friend of mine sent me. I think she sent it to me sort of to be funny. My friend Danica Lowe, she was living in Hong Kong for a little while and they, you know, in Asia, they take, you know, avoiding the sun really seriously. So she sent me this visor. It's so cool because it basically can be like, I had it on all day today. So it could be like, you know, on, you can lift up. If you need to like say something like to my kids, and for instance, you can bring it down to like different levels. So you can have it like this 
You can have it down like this, and you can even bring it all the way down over your face, almost like a mask. It's pretty awesome. All right, so update on my face. I just got out of the shower, and I am kind of like looking at my skin. It has been exactly a week because it's Friday morning, and you can see that my skin is still red. You can still see the hyperpigmentation. I peeled again this morning. It's like a very gentle peeling. It, you know, it happened while I was rinsing my face in the shower, so while my skin was kind of damp, it was, you know, starting to peel off and stuff with just, you know, just like that movement of my fingers. It's not like that peeling and flakiness that you see with typical chemical peels and stuff. My skin looks great though. I, I, I don't think the camera truly shows the texture and stuff because when you touch my skin, it feels like new skin. And yesterday, you know, we had a video shoot and Nikki came over, my makeup artist, to do my makeup. My makeup just looked so perfect and smooth on my face. So while you guys can see, that redness still. Everything is definitely improving. I didn't expect this first treatment to get rid of all my melasma. It's just not realistic to think that way. So if anything, I see this improvement in my skin. You know, in a few days, I'll have better before and after shots for you guys too when the redness has really calmed down. I hear it can be like two weeks before all that redness goes away. You can truly see it right there, all that redness. So, you know, we'll have a better idea of where my skin ends up. You know, you shouldn't really do this treatment again until your, your skin is kind of where it's going to be and then you take a good look at it. In the meantime, I'll continue using my products that have ingredients that help to brighten my skin, even the skin tone and stuff, the alpha arbutin, you know, the tranexamic acid, the acetylic acid, the Cispera that I purchased, using my retinoids, all of that stuff. Obviously, you slowly reincorporate that back into your skincare routine. I wanted to show you guys this because I've been using the good old Sikapair, Dr. Jart Sikapair, a uh, tiger grass color correcting treatment. This is something that I pull out when I have just like redness, like from a pimple because it has this green tone to it and it has SPF, which we can never get too much SPF, but I wanna show you just even on my pimple. So I tend to do that. And then usually you guys don't realize it, but I put it like around my nose where I naturally just get redness. So I just wanna show you that first, how it tones that down. So you can see how that color kind of changes. And then you go and you put your makeup on on top of it and you end up looking so much better. It's really nice. Anyway, I'll give you guys another update in another couple of days. I'm gonna go finish color correcting and then I'm going to do my makeup and I'll talk to you guys in a few days. Okay, this is gonna be the last time I check in because it is Monday, so let's see. I can count in my head, I promise. I got the treatment done basically a week and a half ago, and it is nighttime, and this is what my skin looks like. I just washed it, I just put some moisturizer on. So I just wanna show you guys before I finish up my skincare routine. So you can see, I still have some redness that's happening. This is finally <laughs> starting to go away. That's how long the pimple will last you. So you can see I still have some redness, some lingering redness. And I, you know, I've talked to Melissa and she said that this could linger for a little while, but you can see that my melasma and the hyperpigmentation is starting to look more like freckles. So it's starting to break up. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do another treatment, which makes a lot of sense. You can't just like do one treatment and then suddenly think that your hyperpigmentation and melasma is just going to disappear, but I can see a difference. I mean, my skin just in general looks like, mm, I don't know, something about my skin, it just feels so nice. It has peeled just a little bit and it feels like it's still pretty sensitive. Like I don't really wanna like exfoliate yet. I don't want to, you know, get really hardcore about using my retinoids and stuff. So all of those really strong actives, I'm not ready for, but I can see a big difference in my skin so far. And it's very encouraging to me and it makes me want to go get it again. So Melissa says I have to wait about four to six weeks because you have to let your skin heal. That's really the thing that you have to think about is you have to be patient because your skin has to heal from this. It's part of you know repairing your skin barrier and then also seeing the full results. I'm not gonna really see those results until that four to six week mark. And then we you know assess it 
and then go in with another treatment and then you have to let it heal again. So it's a process, no doubt about it, but I'm gonna continue using all of my ingredients that are for hyperpigmentation that help fight that hyperpigmentation. I think I'm gonna to talk to Dr. Nina Desai. She's a board certified dermatologist. She's been on mixed makeup a few times. You know, she talks about, you know, taking oral tranexamic acid, which is a thing. So, you know, there's gonna be a process and a journey. I'm gonna, I'm still on a journey. I've been on a journey for my melasma and I'm going to continue Continue being on a journey but this was a really great experience so far and I can't wait to see what happens to my skin next you guys can ask me any questions in the comments you can also find me on Instagram I'm at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you guys soon tell me what you think you see a difference mm -hmm.